Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're going to continue working on our crude application. And in the last video, we ended up having a setup where we now have all of the very basic, at least, crude information where we can create, read, update, and delete. And all of this is then working with our database in a Docker container. Previously, we were only running our Spring Boot, like main here from IntelliJ locally. We would now like to add it to a Docker container and then connect containers. So we have a connection between our MySQL container and our Docker container. I have already implemented this, so it works. But first, I would just like to simply go through all the changes I made, which aren't that many, but there are a few things we need to change from the previous version to ensure it works. But first, let's actually just have a look at the Docker file, which is actually quite simple. We're just using a base image, which in this case is going to be libsummarin Java 17. And we're going to be running inside a JDK Alpine Linux environment. Then set an argument, so kind of like an environment argument, to define that we have a variable called jar file. And this jar file will be positioned inside our target folder. And it's going to be any file with the extension .jar. You would then like to copy our jar file variable argument into our container and call it app.jar. When we then start our program, so not when we create the image, but when we start the container, we then like to call like the command to start the project, which is going to be Java does jar, and then pointing to the app.jar file, which is going to be our Java file built from string, which is then going to run our project. So we're going to be creating this jar using Maven. And inside IntelliJ, there's going to be like a side panel called Maven, where we can then inside profiles, or backend is going to be in this case because it's it's the name of our project. Go back on. And then life cycles. I would first just show this that we clean. So clean will just go through and remove any compiled information. And as you if you notice, the target folder were removed mm -hmm. because if we just run the application basically, like we did when we developed the application, it then compiles, but it doesn't create a jar. So then create a jar we need to install. And this install will then create a target folder. And inside this target folder, we will then have a jar file, which is going to be named based on our definition in POMXML for our build system. But I think it's just going to be backend dash zero zero one snaps at jar. And again, based on the setup, it's very general. So we could, in theory, have some kind of like versioning where we change the version. But because it's just grabbing all jar files or the jar file, it will work anytime. And then. I first thought when I started testing this that it was going to be easy, but I had a few problems because we are then connecting to a MySQL in another container. And one thing I needed to add, which is actually turned out to be quite important, is that in the call we do to the database, of course, we're changing it. So we're no longer calling localhost. We're now going to be calling the container name containing the database. So I'm just going to show it shortly inside the to compose the YAML file. We have defined a name for the database container. It's going to be in this case just database. And then more importantly, we need to add a few parameters where we need to allow public key retrieval. And we're going to turn off use SSL. And I have a general understanding of what it does. It's, it's very apparent. It says what it does in the name. But I'm not quite sure if this actually might end up being some kind of like security issue if it were running in like a real environment. But for now, this is very much to showcase the process and the basic setup. So we don't worry too much about that. But just note, if you're planning to run this in like a more real environment, you'd probably have to look into exactly what is the pros and cons of this and what's like the alternatives. But it was needed for now to set it to work. We then, in like our outermost position, have our token post YAML file. So just again, to recap, we have like a user dashboard main folder, which then contains our backend, database, and frontend folders. And here we then have a Docker Compose, where we previously just had a single service called database. And as mentioned, I have now added our container underscore name, which then names the containers of the database, which actually allow the other container to access it by name. And everything should then be more the same. But we also added a network. So a network is just very simply saying that we create a Docker network. And in this case, we should both define that our database and our backend is going to be running on the Spring network. 
the next time when we add a front end, we're going to be creating a new front end network, which then only accessed by our back end and front end. We can thereby kind of like define and ensure that, for example, our front end is never going to be able to connect to our database. But what we then have in our back end is that we are first building and we're then pointing to the position of our Docker file, which is going to be inside of the back end folder. And as we saw in IntelliJ, the Docker file is positioned in like the most out of position of our backend project. So we just very simply define that inside the backend folder, and it's then simply gonna find it here. We then have some ports like we did when we run it, it's gonna be exposed to port 8080. We're then gonna simply say for now that port 8080 from our backend service is also gonna be exposed to backend or backend but local host 8080 which then allow us to actually showcase it works using Postman Connect directly. The reason not always, so just in case the container or the, the database is not running, but starting up, the backend is going to fail, and then on the second run, it's going to connect. So, again, not the best solution, but it's fine for now. As mentioned, we have our network setup, and then we have a depends on, which very clearly defines that when the containers are starting, we first start our database and then start our backend. But again, depending on like the setup and everything it's running on, the database might be so slow to start that the backend start, it starts even before the database is fully, fully ready, which means the backend might fail a few times. But then we just added like this a bit cheeky solution where we just let the backend restart. And that is mainly the basic setup. That's one thing to note that when I'm using Maven to like install, in most cases, probably could be running all your tests. So if you have tests failing, it won't build a Java file. And I actually had a, I think a test, which was probably just created by Maven when I set up the project, it simply just tested that everything runs, but this test failed because my project doesn't run when the database is not ready. And of course, when I'm just running it locally, there's going to be no database. So just again to showcase that it's all the changes. If we go through like the git commit history, we can say that in the application properties, we have added or changed localhost to database and I added my parameters. I deleted this backend test, which simply just loads the application, starts it with no calls, but it fails because there's no database. So we just delete this folder. As mentioned in our compose, before we had a very simple service, just a database. We now added a database name, a network, and all the backend functionality. And of course, our Docker file. And I don't think I have even mentioned before, but this project is on GitHub, and I'm trying my best to make sure every commit to GitHub is kind of like matching a video on YouTube. So in theory, if you want to go back to like earlier versions, you can look at the git commit history and actually find exactly how the build were at a given video state. But let's actually ensure it works, because now we've been talking quite a bit about different setups. We have a dog container, we have a dog compose, but what all of this should actually just simply do is that I should now be able to go into my outermost position of my project and open a terminal and simply be able to do docker compose up and shoot then build a database, backend, start our database, start our backend, and in theory, everything should work every time because we kind of like to find a path of how the project is going to be built. We're not building each component step by step, which also make this quite nice. This should work on, on all machines because it's built on Docker inside these like Linux container environments. So there shouldn't it shouldn't be dependent on like which environment it's running. We could take these container, we can these each of these individual images or containers and then like put them somewhere and then extract them and put them in a, for example on a on a cloud repository and so on. But let's hope it works. It should very much work. And we might give it a few seconds to start start and load. As mentioned, the database might be a bit slow to start up and it's needed for our backend that our database is running. So we actually here see it fading a few times. 
and I would then very much hope it actually achieves a connection at some point. And we can see it here, our database is now ready for connection. So our next Spring Boot startup should connect. And it did. So as you can see here, because it was actually the very first time I was running my database container, I think we actually failed on the back like four, three or four times, which isn't a good way of doing it. And I know this is a general problem. And I've seen some solutions where we create like a, like a build or wait script, which then first start the database. And then inside our backend container, we have a script which says, instead of starting Spring Boot application straight up, we would wait like a minute or wait 30 seconds or something like that. Because it is not long in its wait, as you just saw, but on most setups, we need a bit of waiting time because the database need to, in this case, need to create the database and they need to load our SQL and ensure everything works. But that's a lot of talk. Let's actually just ensure and prove it works because I should now be able to go into localhost 8080 and simply call slash users. And it works. And we should be able then create users, update users, and delete users. But here we just see it works, so everything should work as expected, because it's the same thing we had before, we just put in a dot container. So now, we would either, I'm actually not quite sure what next step is gonna be, I'm either maybe gonna creating a few tests for my backend to ensure it works, and I think testing is also quite important. Otherwise, we're gonna be starting on our front end, to create a very simple React project where we can then actually do all these things. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this showcase of how we dockerize our Spring Boot application to also connect to our database MySQL. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.